Hello guys, let's talk about unit cells. So what is a unit cell? It is the repeating base pattern in a crystalline solid. This is also the smallest repeating portion of a crystal lattice. Now, how do you figure out what is the shape of a unit cell? Well, unit cells are composed of so-called lattice points, which define the overall structure of the crystalline compound. And these lattice points, as they are shown here in two dimension, going to be connected by so-called lattice vectors and define the unit cell. So where do I put a lattice vector? I can, let's say, choose this lattice point connect it with the lattice vector to this one and use another lattice vector here repeat it and this is my unit cell and you can see that i can do this over and over and over again no matter which direction i go in this crystalline two-dimensional structure now it is really interesting that there are only five different crystal lattices exist in two dimensions with different sizes of lattice factors and with different angles between them. Those are the oblique, the rhombic, the rectangular, the hexagonal, and the square. So basically, these are the only types of shapes that you can put together without any gaps to create a crystal lattice. What happens in three dimensions? In three dimensions, we actually have seven basic crystal lattices. And the most important one of these is actually the cubic crystal lattice because the structures of many metals conform to one of the cubic unit cells. We are going to talk about this more on the next slide. So we also have tetragonal, orthorhombic, hexagonal, rhombohedral, monoclinic, and triclinic crystal lattices. But let's jump back to the cubic crystal lattices. So we are actually going to distinguish between primitive lattices in which we are only going to have atoms in the lattice points. So when we have a primitive cubic lattice, we're going to have eight atoms in the lattice points connected with the lattice vectors. Now, we can also have so-called centered lattices, which are going to have atoms in another regular locations, such as the body center, so literally in the middle of my cube, or the face center, so the centers of the faces or the sides of my cube okay and as i mentioned this is really important for metal structures so what do you think will i have all of my atom inside one cube or will some part just be outside of a unit cell well we can actually take a look at a structure made of marshmallows and toothpicks. So if you look at this large marshmallow and imagine this is a spherical atom, you actually see that some part of this marshmallow is outside of my cube, right? Right here, this part is outside. Now, how do I figure out how many atoms do I have inside a unit cell? Well, I can do that by figuring out the number of atoms in each corner for a primitive cubic unit cell and then figuring out the contribution of each corner atom to the unit cell. Well, I know that in a cube I'm going to have eight corners. Let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. That's eight corners. Now, how many cubes would share this one marshmallow right here? Well, thankfully, I made a bigger structure, okay? So this is the same big marshmallow from the previous structure, right? So this one, that's just one cube. And now I have it in the middle. So let's count how many cubes are actually sharing this large marshmallow in the middle. So I'm going to have, let's look at this here. One, two, 
three, four cubes, right, on this side. And then, so this, this side is already taken. I counted everything here. I'm going to have one, two, three, four more on this side. So a total of eight cubes are sharing the same marshmallow in the middle. This means that I'm going to have the contribution of one eighth of an atom on each corner. Okay? So from here, I can actually calculate the number of atoms within a unit cell. So I said that I have eight corners, right? So this is the number of atoms in each corner, and I have to multiply that by the contribution, which I just said is going to be one eighth. So if I do this calculation, I'm going to get one. So when I have a primitive cubic unit cell, like this one, and I have huge spheres right here in the corners, I'm going to have a total of one atom inside this unit cell. All right, let's move on to the body-centered cubic unit cell. And this is also really easy because I already know that a total of one atom is actually on the corners, right? Because I had the eight atoms, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the corners, and one eighth of each is contributing to the inside of the unit cell. And where do I have the body centered one? Well, in the center, right? So I'm going to have one full atom in the center of the body centered cubic unit cell. So how does that look? So if I have my unit cell right here, I'm going to add a huge marshmallow in the middle. So how many atoms or marshmallows do I have inside the unit cell in this case? Two, right? Because I'm going to have one from the corners, right? Eight corners multiplied by one eighths, which is the contribution, plus one more atom in the body center. So I'm going to have a total of two atoms in a body center cubic unit cell. Now, what about the face-centered cubic unit cell? Well, in this case, I'm still going to have the corner atoms, right? So I know that I have eight corners multiplied by one eighth is the contribution. And now I have to figure out how many faces do I have in a cube? We can do that by simply calculating the number of atoms on the faces in this figure. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we are going to have six faces, right? And then now I have to figure out the contribution. So what part of a face-centered atom is inside the unit cell? Well, it's actually pretty easy to see if I just use my unit cell and then I take a marshmallow and then I put it in the face center. What part of it is inside the cube? Half, right? And makes sense. So basically, two cubes are going to be sharing one atom on the face center. So since I have six faces and half is the contribution inside each unit cell, I'm going to have eight times one eighth plus six times one half, which is going to give me a total of four atoms inside a face center cubic unit cell. All right, I hope this makes sense. Make some marshmallow cubic unit cells. These are really fun and they will help you to see better where the atoms are. I'm really bad at seeing these things on paper or on screen, so actually having it in three dimensions uh, helps me a lot. And also I can eat some marshmallows. All right, see you in the next video.